Hello and welcome to this very special conversation as we continue with our focus on India Revival Mission and we speak about the various aspects of emerging from this pandemic as gradually focus also gets divided between health and now economy let's talk about where we are headed from here and joining us for this special conversation is Mr. Nilesh Shah a top market voice here to help us understand what should our strategy be really as far as investments and savings are concerned in times of a pandemic. Mr. Shah, thank you so much for speaking with us. Um, you know, the first question that everybody is asking right now is, should I be putting money in markets uh, as the markets, uh, you know, go up and down uh, the way they have in the last few weeks? Should I invest money right now or should I keep it with myself? What should my savings strategy be? Tanvi, good news and good prices don't come together. Generally, time to buy is when there are bad news. And when there are good news, prices have already discounted. So one, an investor must take advantage of current situation to buy when markets have fallen, when markets have become cheap. But right now, if I can just show this chart, markets are likely to be pendulum. If there is medical breakthrough, if there is news of fiscal stimulus, if there is news of monetary stimulus, if number of cases or number of deaths come down, market will swing positively. In absence of this news, it will probably come down. But this is the nature of the market. It will keep on swinging up and down. An investor must follow disciplined asset allocation and be a long-term investor to take advantage, advantage of current situation. Okay, you know, but even for long-term investors, just for example, uh, if I'm not wrong, we would have by now wiped out at least the gains that uh, any investor would have made in the last three to four years, if not more. Uh, in that uh, uh, sense, how, what do you tell an investor? What's the long-term explanation that we are giving to them? So, Tanvi, yes, on equity side, you are absolutely right. Last three, four years return have disappeared. Market is like a time travel machine. You can go back four years to buy large cap stocks because Nifty is trading at 2016 level. You can buy go back six years to buy mid cap stocks because Nifty is trading at 2014 level. And you can go back nine years to buy small cap because Nifty small cap is trading at 2011 level. So there is no doubt that people have lost a lot of money because markets have corrected back to four years, six years and nine years. But on the other hand, if you are invested in fixed income funds, you are still positive. If you are invested in gold ETFs, you are still positive. If you are invested in offshore funds, you are still positive. So don't look at everything from the prism of equity. Like in your plate, you have dal, roti, chawal, sabji for your physical health. In your uh, portfolio, you must have debt, equity, commodity, currency. And that will create your financial health. Today, equity is down, but other asset classes are still up. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, we've also, you know, the other aspect I wanted to talk about is how um, investors usually react in such times when there is a um, fear of job loss, when there are job losses happening, when there are you know issues with businesses and smaller businesses are staring at a possibility of shutdown, people tend to dip into their savings. Are you seeing that kind of an impact uh, in the mutual funds? Are people pulling out their money at this point? So as of today, fortunately, we haven't seen that kind of redemption. We have more than two crore investors. So obviously, it's a very, very large universe. There could be one exception here or there. But undoubtedly, there are lots of inquiries from people who are worried about negative return in equity funds, whose SIP returns have become negative in the month of March. Though in April, they have become positive, but it is still lower than fixed income. So there are a lot of inquiries from investors and we want to reassure them that if you maintain your fiscal financial discipline, if you buy when things are cheap, it will look better when things improve. For example, in March 20, when you looked at five-year SIP returns, they were negative. 
But in April 20, when you look at those numbers, they are lower single digit, mid single digit positive. Whereas in Jan 20, the same numbers were looking lower double digit positive. So in just four months, you have seen a range from lower double digit to negative return to mid single digit positive. Now, this is the nature of the market. If you have financial emergencies, you have to dip into your reserves and take money out. There's no doubt about it. But if you are redeeming because you are panic and you want to move to safety, this is not the right time. This is time to be greedy. This is time to be buying into market, which has become cheaper. And once things improve, automatically your returns will be much higher on this investments. Okay, um, there, there was a huge concern that hit the markets a couple of weeks ago uh, when Franklin Templeton decided to wind up some of its debt schemes. Uh, and, and the question that everybody was asking then is if it's their debt schemes, could it be also, you know, the other companies and their uh, funds as well? Uh, have we largely managed to contain that crisis, Mr. Shah? Undoubtedly. We did see panic reaction from investors on Friday as well as Monday post announcements by Templeton on Thursday evening. But by next Thursday, redemption pressure came down by 81%. It was a sudden shock to all the other mutual funds because people not only redeemed from Templeton, but they also started redeeming from all other funds. And we redeemed almost 26% of credit risk funds AUM without resorting to any borrowing. Every single assumption was met in the normal course of business and everyone was paid back. We also, you know, take the help of media like yourself to reassure investors. Our mutual fund distributor community also reached out to investors, showed investors our portfolio, which was significantly superior in terms of credit profile vis-a-vis -vis other mutual, vis-a-vis -vis Templeton. And all those things together, communication, portfolio disclosure, credit quality of portfolio, and most importantly, tireless work by our distributors ensure that investors today have stayed invested, the panic is gone, and we are back to normal level of redemption in credit risk fund. Um, let me talk a little bit about the larger macroeconomic issues uh, and here on Mirana we've, you know, um, and as you're aware of started this campaign called the India Revival Mission. Now as we bring in more and more relaxation across the country, uh, you know, Ms. Mr. Shah, what does the industry need? You're looking at the earnings that are coming out. These are pre-pandemic, uh, you know, uh, quarterly earnings that we are staring at right now, but it gives you a sense of just how bad things could be in the coming months. How does one go about reviving this economy and then the business sector? So industry will have to differentiate in two parts. One whose business is good, but who has cash flow mismatch. They need to be given forbearance, one-time restructuring and additional loan so that they can survive current cash flow mismatch. But there are certain industries which have been hit very badly. They not only require loans on a for meeting cash flow mismatches, but they require some fiscal subsidy, some grant, some aid in order to survive the downturn. So we must differentiate industries which require cash flow and they can be given monetary stimulus, industry which really requires subsidy, grant, aid, and they should be given fiscal as well as monetary stimulus. A combination of fiscal and monetary stimulus will ensure that our industry will be able to survive the downturn. The second thing which we should do, we run a trade deficit of $60 billion with China. That's roughly 400,000 crore a year. If we can replace made in China goods with made in India goods, that will ensure that there is 400,000 crore money instead of going abroad, instead of going to China, will remain in India. Our entrepreneurs will benefit. So as Indian, I should focus on replacing made in China goods with made in India goods that will significantly benefit my businesses. Okay, fair enough. I was actually very curious also to ask you about one thing. Uh, we don't know 
what the post corona world is going to look like how are the consumption patterns going to change how our business is going to function differently how many of us will end up simply working from home or going to office um, you know there's a lot of conversation about how the behavior consumer behavior itself is changed in such times then uh, uh, mr Nir uh, shah uh, you know what do you bet on in terms of investment where do you look so one as individual, I have kept my portfolio diversified between debt, equity, real estate, and commodity, and offshore investment in global funds. That portfolio gives me some up, some down, but overall it is outperforming basic inflation benchmark. Second, as equity portfolio manager, I am investing in companies which are not leveraged, which does not have too much debt on their balance sheet. In the time, companies which are leveraged will find it very, very difficult to survive the current downturn. Third, we are looking at companies which will benefit out of this lockdown. Like you correctly mentioned, consumer behavior is going to change. Now, will people shift from Uber luxury to value for money brand? Answer is yes. If my family asks for a new AC today, I'm most probably going to defer it. But if they ask ice cream, I'll probably agree. So low ticket consumer items will do well, but big ticket consumer items can get deferred. So we are trying to invest in companies where businesses will continue to run as per normalcy with minimum damage and who does not have debt on their balance sheet because this combination will ensure that we are able to take advantage whenever upturn comes. Okay, all right. Um, and I just uh, also, you know, lastly wanted to ask you, how long do you think the markets are going to take to recover from where we've reached right now? And I'm not talking about, you know, the uh, daily or the weekly reactions that we're seeing to good news and bad news, or we found a vaccine, we've not found a vaccine, uh, cases are going down and cases are going up, not to that. But in a longer term, how long do you think it will take for us to recover and come back to where we were a few months ago? So this chart probably explains what's going to happen. On x-axis is medical solution, y-axis is fiscal and monetary stimulus. If you are lucky, we get early medical solution and a Rohit Sharma betting kind of fiscal and monetary stimulus. Then things will bounce back quickly. On the other hand, if medical solution is delayed and fiscal and monetary stimulus is like Geoffrey Boycott's betting, then definitely this will get delayed for a longer period of time. So it's the intersection of medical solution and fiscal and monetary stimulus, which is going to determine when economy bottoms out and when market bottoms out. Okay, don't you think, Mr. Shah, that we are already a little late on the stimulus that should be coming in from the government? Uh, essentially, it's important to give a right quantum of stimulus at right point of time and I'm sure they are working on various packages. The lockdown has impacted certain industry which will require monetary and fiscal stimulus but there are many industries which only needs monetary stimulus. The monetary stimulus has already moved ahead with RBI cutting interest rates and providing liquidity to the banks. Fiscal stimulus is something which hopefully is on its way. We will require both of this coming together in tandem at appropriate time so that we can take maximum advantage of this. All right, Mr. Nilesha, appreciate you joining us and really helping us decode, you know, where the markets are headed, what they're thinking, and as an investor uh, and a person who's looking to save, what should my strategy be? Thank you so much for speaking to us here on Mirana. Well, time for a quick break. Lots more news on the other side. Stay with us.